Welcome back everyone. I had some parts show up for them. So here's what I got. I've got all the replacement bushings. These are uh, bronze or something. Originals. These are magnetic. They appear to be steel. But that's what they got. So I got four of them. And they're for the spindle. And then we have uh, two of these bigger ones and two of these smaller ones for the pivots. And I went and made a couple tools. This box that they're sitting on, that is a bushing driver set I got off the internet. I'll put a link in the description for that, but I believe they'll fit these, but it won't fit these. So I went and I made myself a couple bushing drivers. This one started out as a piece of pipe and a tie rod from a vehicle. And this one started out as a broken axle shaft off a pickup. Well, what do you say we get uh, pounding these in? There, there is no greaser hole in these new bushings like there was in the old ones. So I'm going to take the greaserts out so I can drill a hole after they're installed. I still have one of these bushings in there, so I'm going to use the driver from my kit I got to drive it out because this shoulder does not stick proud of the bushing. Now when I drive the new ones in, I'm going to drive them in from this side. It's just a little bit more convenient for me. Then I'll have to check on the other side to make sure I'm not going too far. careful not to catch the bearing races slide your thrust bearing on slip the whole assembly in
Well, those bushings sure seem to tighten everything up. Now let's see if uh, he'll mount to the tractor. This part right here is the rear saddle and that fits like a 460 and probably a bunch of other farmers with the wet bolster. So the problem is, is that part right there, when it bolts on up there, is roughly two and a half inches lower. Well, I don't really want to jack the front end of my tractor up that much. And when you put this system on an M, it's actually a different part number. This whole thing is shorter. My brother's Super MTA has the proper bracket on. And I did a little bit of measuring off that. And I think I'm just going to cut this down, make it fit. I don't have any 460s, 560s. I don't plan on put, putting this on on any other tractor. These are available, but they're, uh, <laughs> they're like $300 a piece from A&I. So I think I'm just going to figure out where I need to chop this off and then I'll be able to flip this like that, drill a couple new holes, fill these old holes in and you'll hardly even know that I did anything with it. I measured a few times it's all up to my metal cut and circular saw now Here's what I got so far. It's uh, pretty well welded up. Got to fill in the holes and touch it up a little bit with uh, shortening this. We are about an inch wide, and between this surface and here. It's two and a half inches, which puts this surface in here about four and three quarters. That's the best I could determine off my measurements. Well guys, moment of truth, do you think this is going to clear? Uh, looks like uh, somehow either I measured something wrong or 
this is out of whack here. So I measured off my brother's Super MTA, which has no modified bracketry. I'll have to do a little bit of measuring on here, see what the dysfunction is. So I, I had to add a spacer plate in there. Uh, apparently my measurements weren't accurate enough. I kind of measured on the back side here. I should have probably measured on the front. It was a little bit easier to see. But I was off uh, about a quarter inch or so. So I welded uh, another piece on there. Everything pivots. Picked up a new grease gun end. Lock and lube. Should be pretty slick. A handy packer, bearing packer. Used to use one of these at my last job. I know how to do it in the palm of your hand. The manual way. But this is a little less messy. And before you ask or correct me, this is what I'm using, and from what I can find on the internet, wheel bearing grease is NLGI number two. There is another version of grease that some stuff recommends that's more runny, I believe, than that. This is just a cover. That's uh, just over a tube of grease in there. That should last me quite a while. You set your bearing down in like that. Take this part, shove that on there, and then you just push. It does take some pushing to get the grease to come out. Last place I worked at, we actually had a lever on a stand. That helped out a lot. I'm going to cheat here. I'm going to put a bar underneath my vise. Plenty of grease. And you still want to go and take it, put it on the rollers. Get it in there real good. Much less effort using the bar. When you're all done, you just stick that back in there. Put your cover on there to protect everything. I got as much of the old grease cleaned out of here as I can, but this thing is just like a huge reservoir in there. I went and squirted a little bit of new grease back here, because there's kind of like a thing that holds some of it back here.
then I'll squirt a little bit of new grease in around there. can go in. The old nuts had the washer built in so I got to put some new washers on. And these are a different thread than the old axles so I got to put a different nut on. This is the same nut as what's on like a 1086. You don't want to get these too tight, but you want to make sure that it's actually seated. You don't want to have it where you think it's seated, and it actually isn't, and then it ends up slamming around later on. I do have this quite tight. are used bearings. Sorry guys, I had some camera trouble, so it cut out somewhere in putting the front wheels on. But I think I'm going to end off the video there for now. Bring you back next time I work on it. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless. You want to run them?